Several new backpacking water bottles came out this past year. And it's hard to get them because they're always out of stock. Big demand, right? So what's all the hype about? Most backpackers and hikers have carried or are carrying disposable water bottles. Now these are made from PET plastic, that is polyethylene terephthalate. I'm not going to say that again. It's PET. <laughs> now these are BPA free. They're super lightweight. They're food grade and they can last months, but they are very specifically designed for single use. Should we be reusing them? So right off the shelf, the water in these plastic bottles have 25 million tiny plastic particles in it. The particles are called microplastics. Well, these microplastics leach harmful chemicals into the air, into the water supply, into the food supply. Humans are impacted for sure, and animals are impacted as well. And of course, the environment. In 2018, the healthcare costs due to plastic related chemicals reached $250 billion in the US alone. Now that's a pretty big number, but the actual number I'm told is grossly more than that because it's not including all the indirect medical costs. When chemicals from plastics cause reproductive issues, metabolic disorders, developmental problems in children, cancers, cardiovascular disease, you know, it's not like you can take a pill and undo the damage. It's often years or maybe a lifetime of hardship and medical costs. Now to the environment, microplastics have been found in nearly every ecosystem on earth, every ocean, and even remote areas like Antarctica, you can find microplastics. So far, about 1,500 species have been found to be negatively impacted by plastics. Now, getting back to these PET water bottles, remember I mentioned the 25 million microplastic particles we ingest when we drink the water that comes in these bottles? Well, if we reuse the bottles, that number keeps skyrocketing. Now, if you wash these bottles, especially in hot water, microplastic shade. If you expose these bottles to UV, like out in the sun, more shedding. If you use them to squeeze the water into your water filter, even more microplastic shedding. And just taking on and off this top here several times a day, you guessed it, more shedding. Although at first it sounds like reusing the bottles might be environmentally responsible, it's not as great as it sounds, especially in the way we use these bottles when we're backpacking. You can always recycle these bottles, which creates more chemicals, but it's better than not recycling it. And here's the thing. When you reuse these bottles, it's not like you can go around picking up all the millions of little tiny particles that you left laying around, exposing chemicals to everything and everybody. You know, there's just no getting back from that. So, that's one of the biggest reasons for the surge in these new water bottles this past year. But are these new bottles better than PET plastics? And what are the options? Well, the options really need to satisfy our needs. For instance, most backpackers would require that water bottles be lightweight and durable. They need to be compatible with our water filters. They need to fit the lid. The squeeze type water filters typically are 28 millimeters, but there's also some 42 millimeter lids out there for water filters. They need to be pliable enough to squeeze into our water filters. They need to fit into the pockets of our backpack. Those are the primary needs that I think most backpackers would recognize. And here are a few bottles that recently entered into the market to satisfy those needs. We have this uh, Canuck through bottle. I put the little sticker on here. It runs about $13. We have the Igneous Noble bottle, and that runs about $22. And then we have the Migo here by Mazama Designs. These run about $19. There's also some 
collapsible water bottles. I'm not a huge fan of these, but they've been released here recently. And this Canuck Visca is $18. But you'll say, Bro, what's the point? They're all plastic. Right. Uh, these do not address all the objections with the use of plastic. And I'll talk more about other options in a minute. But the sort of good news is that some plastics are better than others. For instance, these new bottles that I just showed you, they shed far less microplastics than PET plastic. And they are designed for long-term use, like I would say years. Now here's a couple of infographics showing some great information on different types of plastics, which ones maybe are better than others. It's worth a few minutes of your time to give these a little bit closer look because there's a lot of information here. The links are down below. Now the Canuck and Igneous bottles here are HDPE plastic. And the Mazama Migo is made out of LDPE plastic. Well, for the backpacker, all of these are better than PET single-use bottles. They can be used with a common squeeze type water filter. They're pretty durable. They will fit into your backpack pockets. And although they're a little heavier than PET plastic bottles, they are still very lightweight. So what are the other options? Well, for a long time, Nelgene bottles have been on the market. And they are made of HDPE plastic. Actually, a, quite a bit tougher than these other HDPE. These are squeezable. Uh, these are not. So these are not going to work with your squeeze type filter. And also notice the tops on these things are not the size of your filter either. Now, Nelgene and others put out all kinds of bottles like this. There might be some out there that have the right lid. I don't know. I haven't seen any. There are also metal bottles out there on the market. There's stainless steel like this one. And then there's titanium ones that are a little bit lighter. Now they're tough for sure. They're metal and they'll last a long time. But again, the tops don't fit most squeeze type water filters. And they're quite a bit heavier and some of the titanium ones are really pricey you can also use a different water treatment method like ditch the squeeze type water filter i know nearly every backpacker just stopped watching we're just looking at the options here folks don't panic there are water treatment options that can be used that do not require a separate plastic bottle for instance, the UV Bright. This is a UV purifier in a metal container. But Grail also puts out a few different options. These are self-contained push type filters. They're kind of like a coffee press. Katadin Vario and Katadin Hiker Pro are pump filters. Of course, you need something to pump the water into, but it doesn't have to be plastic. MSR Mini Works and MSR Guardians are also pump filters. And they work pretty much the same way as the Katadins do. Now the irony in all of this is that nearly every backpacking water filter system has plastic components. <laughs> you gotta laugh, right? The last option for water treatment is to use water purification drops or tablets. Aquatabs, for example, puts out a great product. And Aquatabs is usually my backup option, but for some people, they use it as their primary option. And they don't necessarily require plastic bottles. For instance, the aqua tabs fit perfectly into here. Okay, so there's a lot of information I did not cover here. This video just barely touches the surface on this topic. Now down below is a bunch of research links where I found all of this great information. Go click on those if you want to dig deeper. But until then, you know, go out, keep on living like you want it. <laughs> I'll see you on the trail. Hey, thanks for watching. And don't forget to mash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And to help support the channel and get early access to videos, press the join button. Or you can go over to Patreon to see what I have for you there. Alright, go live like you want.